<clears throat> Very seldom do I uh, preach a sermon with anyone in particular in mind. Uh, you you guys may think otherwise, but that's it is the truth. I I don't pick and select uh, sermons about this, that, or the other. I just try to preach what's next. But today's a very important day and a very exciting day. Um, Brother Ron mentioned it that today's uh, Sanctity of Life Day, and I don't want to take away from that, but uh, rather than preach a sermon on sanctity of human life, I am going to preach uh, about being a soldier for Christ. And uh, so we have a young man here in our service that uh, this coming Thursday will be leaving for boot camp uh, because he is a member of the Navy. Uh, look around uh, at the size of our church and uh, we, we have several veterans here but we actually have two veterans one's getting ready to start that is, was in the same uh, branch the Navy and they're doing Zane's going to be doing the same thing that Josh. And you could say, well, that's some of these things are calm. Uh, these guys are nuclear specialists. They're one in thousand maybe or so. So how, how, off, how likely would that be? I think it's pretty cool. Right. But it's also the new year. And while this, uh, this sermon... Uh, is geared and towards Zane. I've, I've got him sitting here on, on the front because we're going to honor him. And before I forget, don't anyone go through the line over there until he and Janelle get a chance to go. We're, we're going to honor them. And the Bible's here going through uh, around. So if you don't get a chance to, to do that here, then you can do that in a fellowship time. Uh, so, but make sure you, you do that. You take a chance to do that. But while I'm, I'm preaching this sermon uh, to Zane and Janelle, uh, because they're one, they're not two, right? They're married, so they're one, they're not two. Uh, while I'm preaching that, it, it is applicable uh, for every one of us because God has called us uh, unto uh, war. Right? Uh, we're all being called to be soldiers for Christ. There's none of us being called to sit on the sidelines. Every one of us have been called uh, to serve the Lord and that capacity. So if you have your Bibles and you'd like to follow along, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And I want to share five things with you. Uh, and I'll try to do it very quick. Uh, but it all depends on you. Or a lot of it depends on you. Uh, so uh, a lot of it's going to depend on you, Zane. Uh, <laughs> amen. If they're if they're a, if they're a hundred dollars a piece, then we might be here a while, and you might get flogged rather than lauded uh, whenever we go over there. So, so y'all remember that if Zane's not amen, and then and we're here for a while, then afterwards you have you have my permission to just take him out in the parking lot <laughs> and work him over. Five things about being a soldier of Christ. I, I really feel like every one of them is applicable to all of us. But he is, uh, uh, he's going to do a special thing and be under special circumstances that you and I will not be under for the next uh, 10 weeks. Is that right? Basic. Okay, uh, please stand to your feet as we honor the reading of God's Word. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 7. Paul writing uh, this letter to, to uh, Timothy, of course, uh, his son in the faith. And he's giving him some encouragement as he goes forward in ministry and as he goes out into the world uh, to be a witness for him. The Bible says this, You, Zane, you, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me 
among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. And verse 7 says this, Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Pray with me, will you? Father, thank you for the time that you have set aside uh, for us to come together as a body of believers in Christ Jesus. Thank you that your presence is here. Your power is here. Your glory is among us. So I thank you for that. If not, we would be wasting our time uh, to assemble together. But you're here, you promised, and you are here. So for the remainder part of this service, I pray a very special blessing upon this time. Bless the word of God as it proceeds forth. May it come, uh, uh, proceed forth and touch our lives in such a manner that we will all be drawn closer to you. We'll all be challenged and convicted and comforted and be drawn closer to you than what we've ever been in our lives. Thank you for Zane and Janelle. I pray that you would just continue to have your hand upon them. Thank you, Lord. We're very proud of them. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> in this text, we see Paul reminding his protege, Timothy, of a few things as he's sent out on the battlefield for Christ. He wants him to be successful and aware, and, and aware of how that is to be accomplished. He doesn't just send him out and say, okay, be successful. He sends him out with instruction on how to be successful and to be aware of what is to be accomplished. Today we're sending you, Zane, out as a representative of not only Jesus Christ, but as a member of a proud family here at Emmanuel Baptist. Never See, he's already, amen. I don't know, he's ever done that. <laughs> Never, ever forget that you have a family here. Don't forget that, that is committed to you, to love on you, to pray for you, and that as you go to help defend our great country and spread the love of Christ with your fellow soldiers. He, he's been sent to a unique uh, field amen uh, I'd say that there are gonna there are a lot of folks uh, that you're going to encounter over uh, the time that you're in the military that's not Christians amen uh, our first duty is to Christ our second duty is to our fellow man right so always remember that you're a representative of your Lord and I know you will and that you're a representative of us. Okay? So there's five things I'd like to share with each of us. Remember that we're, because we're in the new year, all of these are applicable to all of us because we've all been called to be soldiers of Christ. Amen? Uh, he's, just full, he's just filling a dual role as a soldier of Christ and a soldier of the United States military. Amen? We've got some veterans that can share with you some really good stuff, and I hope that, that, that they will take time uh, during our fellowship time to come by and give you special encouragement because they've been there, done that. Many of them's got the T-shirt and the uniform to back it up, okay? So listen, there's five things I like to share really fast or slow, remember? Uh, uh, so uh, I'm hung up on the little R, letter R for some reason. The last couple of services or things I've done, the main word starts with the letter R, so here we go again. Uh, first of all, remember where your strength really comes from. Uh, there's an old Bob Seger song. It makes me really sad. Now, I'm a huge 
Bob Seger fan. I don't know if any of y'all like rock and roll, but uh, back in the day whenever I used to listen to rock and roll exclusively, Bob Seger was one of my very favorite artists. And there's one song that he sings that is supposed to be a good song, but it really makes me sad because I remember back whenever I was his age. And the name of it is Like a Rock. 18, solid everywhere and didn't have a care and all of that. So an 18-year-old guy, just as Zane is, I guarantee he's wary. He may not be big and bulky, but I guarantee he'd be hard to hold down on the ground. Because of his age, he is strong. Most 18-year-old boys are, right? But that's not where you, your strength comes from, son. You may get strong and build up. I'd say the next time we see him, he's going to have a few pounds put on him because of the, all the food he has to choke down really quick and all the exercise that he's going to have to do rather than this, you know. Uh, I'd say he'll be bulked up a little bit next time we see him. Josh is sitting back there going, yep. But that isn't where your strength comes from. That's not where any of our strength comes from. And you need to remember, son, when you're out there and you're doing your thing, your strength doesn't come from this. Your strength comes from the Lord. Amen? Mine and your strength comes from the Lord. The older I get, the more weak I feel. But I'm here to tell you the Bible says when we're weak, then he is strong. Praise the Lord. Amen? Tommy's amen and for you, Zane. So... Uh, it's still not going to cut anything off the service unless you do it. Listen to what verse 1 says of the, of, second, of, of the text that we're using. You, therefore, my son, be strong, how? In the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, remain strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay, as you encounter trials, as you encounter trials, y'all are thinking, I'm getting out of this service. It's all about saying, no, it ain't. About y'all too, remember? As we encounter trials, as you encounter trials, no matter how big they may seem, I want you to remember something else. Our God is bigger. It's bigger than every trial you may face. And his grace is sufficient to cover your ever need. Remember your strength, where your strength comes from. Remember also that your strength that is found in this text is a gift that has been carefully selected for you. His grace for you in this time that you're going to encounter has been tailor-made. For Zane Ziegler. He's got a fresh dose. That's tailor made. For each and every one of us. Amen. He's got a suit of armor. For each of us. That is specifically designated. To equip us. As we go through different trials. And things of life. Amen. Grace. For every need. God has grace set aside for us. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. It is a gift. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. God has to give it. We have to receive it. So be strong. Draw your strength from Jesus' grace. Amen? Draw your strength from his grace. And by talking and seeing just encountering this couple this morning, you would think that Janelle's the one going to basic training. <laughs> yeah, because she is heartbroken. So while you need to draw your strength while you're being yelled at and things by your drill sergeant, equipping you for the task at hand, honey, you need to be strong in the grace that God has tailor-made for you while he's gone. Draw from that grace whenever you start feeling lonely and sad. And remember this great task that God has 
called this boy to do. And you be strong for him through the grace that God is going to equip you and give you during this time. God is good. He is good. There is no other uh, adjective that I want to leave with you guys today than to leave with you the adjective of God is good. Amen? He's already given this boy everything that he needs to do what he's going to do. He's already laid it out there. As well as us. We have to receive what God has on the table for us or we'll walk away hungry. Just like this morning. There'll be some that'll walk away. I didn't get a thing out of the service. What did you bring to catch it in? Amen? If we go over there to have our fellowship meal and there's no plates, no spoons, no anything, how in the world are you going to have a great meal? Right? A lot, of us, a lot of us bring our buckets to the house of God to catch the blessing, but the buckets have holes in them. Amen? Yeah, y'all don't want to amen that. I'm sit, I've been sitting where you sit. Remember where your strength really comes from. Psalm 121, 1 through 3. The psalmist wrote these words. I will lift my eyes into the hills from whence comes my help. My help don't come from the mountains. Listen to what verse 2 says. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth, who will not allow your feet to be moved. He who keeps you will not sleep or slumber. Amen. God's got his eye on you, son. Remember that. Listen to what Philippians 4.19 says. I, I, I hope that that's one of y'all's favorite verse that you'll highlight in his Bible. And my God shall supply all your needs. How much? Will you lack anything? If you look to him for him, he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The bank of heaven will never, ever run dry. Amen. So remember where your strength comes from. Okay, the second thing is to reverberate. That word reverberate, if you look it up in the uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, means to echo. Any of you ever been somewhere where you could yell and you could hear your voice come back? That echo? Paul said, you're to be my echo, Timothy. Whatever I tell you, you're supposed to reverberate it back to others. Amen? We're called to be rivers. We're not called to be lakes. One of the reasons that some of our faith has grown stale and old and cold is because we have become lakes and we're not rivers. We need to jerk that dam out of the end of the lake and become rivers once again. What does that mean, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. What you hear, you're to share. Amen? As you have a church family that's praying for you, many of them boys don't. Many of them have never received what you receive. And whenever you get to go through basic training with the strength of the Lord, and they're trying to do it in their own strength, and they look at you and they see how you're doing, it's your job then whenever they say, Zane, we're doing the same thing, dude, and you're doing this and that. How in the world is that possible? Then you get to do like I say about every Sunday. I'm so glad you asked. Amen. I've got somebody that's living in here that is the God of the universe. And the reason he's living in here is because I received his son by faith. That is where my strength comes from. And I pray to him every day that he will give me what I need. And he does. Isn't that great? Amen. The reason some of us are old and stale and cold and is because we become a lake. We, we're, we come in, gimme, gimme, gimme. And that's where it ends. We receive, but we don't give. We don't pass on what we learn. Right? Can I get a witness? He 
He's a little shy if you didn't know. We're to echo what we know to others that are facing the, some, of, some of the same things that we face. You, you and your comrades will be sharing a lot of the same trials, right? I mean, that's a unique thing about all of you going through basic training. All of you going to be wore out, tired, grouchy, and all those things. You'll be going through the exact same thing. But you'll have something different. You have someone different in your corner than many of them will have. And that is your opportunity to share that God has given you the victory through his son. Listen to what 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says. And the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses commit or reverberate. Sound it off to others. Are we doing that church? Are we telling people about the goodness of God every chance we get? Do we shout at the drop of the hat and have the hat here ready to drop at just the right moment where we can shout? Or are we looking for reasons to not shout? Well, I would have shouted in church yesterday, preacher, but the music was too loud. Oh, I really would have got excited, but you know what? So-and-so looked at me cross-sided whenever I walked into the service. So that made me mad. I couldn't shout uh, throughout the service. I would do this, but, or I would do that, but. Paul said, the things that you receive, pass on to others. That's our great privilege. Not only does God get a, put us in a position to learn, but he puts us in a position to pass these things along. Amen? As a good soldier of Christ, we're not only to walk in victory ourselves, right? We are to share with others on what causes the victory that are that is in our lives so they can apply them and walk therein. What does that sound like, Rick Sawinski? Invest 2023. It's not rocket science. What you learn... Pass it on. Amen? And when you pass it on, they can draw strength and they can pass it on. As you and your fellow soldiers are facing similar hardships, keep in mind that the Lord has called you to be the light. You are called to be the encourager. And that in itself will be a great witness to those who are a true follower of Christ and it will be a witness to those that are without. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. If all we do is walking around like we've been sucking on a bag of lemons, our witness is terrible. Amen? But that also tells me where our vision is. But if our vision is above, then praise God, we've got plenty to be excited about. Amen? I think I heard him say amen again, so we'll move on. Uh, Acts 16, uh, uh, in the midst of what shouldn't be pleasant, and they didn't create basic training to be pleasant. It's not a party or anything. In the midst of what should be pleasant, if you can maintain your witness through that, you'll not only be a blessing to other believers, but you'll be a blessing to those who are not saved, and they will take notice as well. I've got some scripture to back that up, and it's one of the coolest stories over in the book of Acts. It's Acts 16.25 is the ver one singular verse that I'm going to use. I love to share the whole story, but I can't for the sake of time. Paul and Silas are, are beaten and arrested in Philippi and thrown in the jail. In the deepest, darkest part of the jail with their backs ripped open and they're putting stocks. Y'all seen pictures of people in stocks? You know, their head and their arms through here and their, their legs are chained. And what would we be doing if it was us? They're arrested for preaching. They ain't arrested for stealing or lying or anything else. They're arrested in Philippi for preaching the gospel. They're beaten and they're thrown into the prison. At midnight, Acts 16.25 says this, 
But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Who was, what happened? It says this. And the prisoners, the people that weren't saved, were listening to their witness. Every time you return to your barracks and you jerk that Bible out and you start flipping through it, somebody's going to be watching. Whenever you're praying, somebody's going to be listening. Reverberate what we know and what we've been taught. In other words, pass it along to somebody else. It doesn't have to necessarily, it needs to be intentional, but sometimes it's not even intentional. I had a fella, uh, when I worked in the install office, he come into my office, he was one of my installers, and he was really uh, beat down and broken. And as he and I started walking through the store, I was, I was taking him out with his merchandise several years ago. Uh, he was sharing with me how broken and beat down that he was. And we got right up to the first aisle as you turn uh, the corner coming out of my office with a load of stuff. And Holy Spirit said, now's the time to pray. I said, if you don't care, I want to pray with you right now before I forget. He said, that's okay with me. I put my hand on him and I prayed. Whenever I said amen, I looked up and here was somebody coming around the, another aisle had heard me praying with tears in his eyes. I said, I needed that. And the prisoners were listening. Reverberate what you know. If you know that we should pray, then pray. You never know who's listening. You're not doing it for, for a show, but you, listen, you'll never know the benefits. Whenever you pull your Bible out, whenever you go to the restaurant, folks, and they, they bring you your food, if that waitress is broken and you can tell that she's broken, it's okay to say, hey, is there anything that I can pray for you about? I'm getting ready to pray over my food. Is something going on in your life that I can pray about? You never know what a difference you can make. Reverberate. Pass on what you know. Number three, realize that hardship is what brings out the godly character in people, not a life of ease. I've learned a whole lot more through hardship than I have when everything's going yeah, a few of you said amen. Did you say amen? Well, he's too young. Yeah, he's not really, yeah, not yet. If we, if we never had to go through trials, how would we know that God's big enough to deliver? How would we know? If you've never been through a trial, how do you know that God can? Right? I know that God can. I've experienced his goodness. Amen? Now, I read in, 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 the, in the Word of God that tells that God can, but I've experienced God can. Hardship is what brings out godly character. Verse number 3, 2 Timothy 2, 3, You, therefore, must endure hardship. It doesn't say you have to enjoy it. It says you have to endure it sometimes. And all the men that's married said, y'all in trouble. And all the ladies that are married said, golly, the men won. You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. God chose to deliver the children. Listen to these, these few things. God chose to deliver the children of Israel through the Red Sea, not around the Red Sea, not over top of the Red Sea. God could have froze her solid and they could have walked across it, couldn't he? Can God do anything he wants? He could have directed them around the Red Sea to get them to their chosen destination. But you know God intentionally brought them to the Red Sea to show them that he was big enough to open her up. Amen? That was hardship on the children of Israel. It wasn't fun and games. 
They had just barely come out of Egypt, and here they are at the Red Sea, and they happened to look back, and they saw the dust cloud and everything coming from Pharaoh's army. He was intending to wipe every one of them out. They started crying and screaming, Moses, you brought us out here for Pharaoh to kill us. God And, and Moses prayed. God said, stretch out that staff over the, over the sea and watch how I watch me work. Amen. So if God had never opened and parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel to walk through on dry ground, would we know that he could? No, I don't think we would. God chose uh, to deliver the three, he- three Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter 3 through the fire. Amen? Through the fire, not from the fire. He could have chose to deliver them from the fire. He could have changed the king's mind. And the king said, okay, guys, I'm going to just let you go. Couldn't he? But God says, you know what? I need to show Nebuchadnezzar something too. And I want to prove to these boys that they're never, ever alone. Do you know if you're a child of God, you're never alone? He promised, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. He also promised in Matthew 28, 20, that I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. But sometimes he needs to prove to us that he's still with us. You ever looked up and said, you still with me? If you haven't, you probably never faced much hardship. Hardship brings out the promises of God in our lives when we cling to that unchanging hand. Remember how it went? Guys, I'm going to give you one more chance. You can bend and you can bow to my idol that I've erected. King, don't waste your breath. The God we serve is able to deliver us out of your hand. But even if he chooses not to deliver us, if we're cast alive into the fire and that's it, we're still going to serve him. Okay, boys, heat the furnace up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated. Bound them up, right? Throw them in. The captors got slain whenever they were thrown, when the three Hebrew guys were thrown in. Nebuchadnezzar goes and takes a peek into the furnace. Did we not cast three into the furnace? Behold, there's four. Loose. They were bound. They're loose. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Amen? There are four men loose walking around in the fire. And and I think it's pretty odd, sort of, that he didn't call all of them out. The king didn't. He didn't say, hey, and, and you, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come on out of there. He didn't call for the fourth man to come out. He didn't want the fourth man to come out, right? I'm glad I've got the fourth man. Through hardships, you'll find out really that the fourth man's with you. When you come back, I'm anxious to hear the stories of the fourth man. Don't really want to hear about hardship, but I'm anxious to hear about the fourth man. God allowed Paul and Silas to be thrown into jail so that the jailer could get saved. Through hardship on Paul and Silas's part, the jailer got saved. The ultimate measure of a man, uh, the, this is a, a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Amen. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Realize that hardship is what brings out godly character in us. And it brings the promises of God to full bear. 
whenever we cling to his unchanging hand. Number four, resist the temptations of entanglement as you wage the good war. Resist the, all those temptations that will entangle us as we wage the good war of Jesus Christ. Amen? We're in a battle, folks. And it's a spiritual battle that has to be fought with spiritual weaponry. Amen? Realize and know and then resist those temptations of entanglement as you wage the good war. Listen to what 2 Timothy 2, 4 says. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Resist all the things that might try to trip you up. Because you're a Christian, because you are a child of God, Satan is going to be in overtime. So resist him during those times. Romans 6, 1 through 14. Romans 6, 1 through 14. Every Christian, uh, every person that's a member of our church and every one of you that's been blood-bought and born again need to know and realize that sin does not have any more power over you than what you give it to have. Satan does not have any more power over you than what you give him. Romans 6 tells us that we have the victory over sin. That it's our choice to rise up in those times of temptation and entanglement as we wage the good war. Romans 6, 1 through 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace should abound? Verse 2, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, uh, Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we're buried with him through baptism unto death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, surely, or certainly, we also will... Uh, be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed, uh, who, is, who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12 through 14. I, I would encourage you to highlight these. Underline them in your Bible. And whenever you're being tempted, go there. And, and read this out loud every single time. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. In other words, you've got a choice in the matter. Don't let it reign in your mortal body. Don't let it rule over you that you should obey it in its lust. Do not present your members, and this is how to avoid the being ruled by sin. Don't present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Don't do it. Don't go there where you're tempted. If you know you're tempted in a certain place, don't go there. If you listen to something that causes you to sin, turn your hearing aid off. Right? And I'm not making fun of people that, that can't uh, hear very well, but I'm just telling you, don't listen to those things. Anything that causes you to sin, don't present your members there to cause you to sin. But then he says this, but present your bodies to God, being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. When you do that, verse 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, 
but you're under grace. Resist the temptation. It'll come your way. Uh, somebody go get the kids and Ron. Number, because we're on number five. And uh, it's a shorter point than, than the rest. And all God's people said, Amen. last of all, receive the wisdom. Receive this wisdom that only God can give you. I mean, there's knowledge all over the world, right? But wisdom is something that comes from Him. And God has got some for you if you'll receive it. God's got some for me if you'll receive it, if I'll receive it. God's got some for you this very day if you'll receive it. Scripture says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Did you know that? That's just the very beginning of wisdom. Receive the wisdom that only comes, that only Jesus can give as you walk in your new assignment. 2 Timothy 2, 7, consider. In other words, son, listen to what I have to say. And may the Lord give you understanding. May he give you wisdom that you never thought on earth that you would have. Receive it. This adventure that you're about to embark on is totally new to you. So is tomorrow for the rest of us. Anybody ever walked in tomorrow? No. So it's going to be a new adventure for all of us, right? This adventure that we're about to embark on, you in particular, Zane, is totally new. But guess what? Tomorrow isn't new with the Lord. He's already seen the end from the beginning. And he already knows exactly what we need. You've heard me say this many, many times. And so I want to tell it to you one more time. The Lord is never early. The Lord is never late, but he's always right on time. Receive the understanding that only comes from what he gives. James 1.5 If any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. What's the key word there? Does anybody know? Is that up there on the screen? It's a three-letter word. Yeah. So that lets us know that God has it in abundance. And he's willing to give it. If you read the last part, but the key part is ask. How many of us wait till we're totally frustrated and at the end of our rope before we ask? I, I'm talking about doing life. I, I'm not. I, I am talking spiritually, but I'm talking uh, secularly as well. Any of y'all ever been in a secular position? Uh, position and you you were at uh you didn't know what to do and you asked the lord and he gave you the answer y'all think this is just for for bible it's for everything but you need to say lord i don't know what to do I need a little help here you give me your wisdom amen Every day, every moment's a unique situation that God gives us. And we need wisdom to navigate and navigate it through vic in victory. Amen? The reason a lot of us are struggling, James also says, you have not because you ask not. Ask for wisdom. 
concerning every avenue of life. And guess what? God's got bucket after bucket of it. Amen? And he wants to give it to you. But we need to ask. Amen? Kids are in? Everybody good? Okay. You two, stand up. <clears throat> I want the veterans here. Anybody that's a veteran, start making your way up to the front. Uh, because you guys have been where he's, he's going. Right? And so you know more how to pray. Right? So come on up here. Lay your hands on him. Not around his neck. But put your hands on him. And upon Janelle. We need to pray for her. Uh, veterans, wives, if you want to come up and pray over Janelle. Yeah. Let's do that too. Or her husband, in, in Heather's case. Yeah. Okay, they're first. The rest of you come on up and put your hands on, on them. Yeah, everybody could come on up here and pray. Uh, I'll give you another minute or two. Okay, while the rest of them are coming up. Uh, I didn't get a chance to highlight this in your Bible. Maybe I'll get a chance to. But Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26 says this. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you, my dear friends, for coming up to pray over these so, Richard, you've been in the service. Will you pray over this, this little family and over this boy as he uh, goes uh, into basic training? Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus. Yes, Father, I just pray that you give them the comfort mm. and the peace that they need. Father, I just pray that you put somebody in each of their lives that they can be able to show them and give them the wisdom that they need, show them the way that they need to go, and also to give them uh, a person to come to uh, when they might be uh, down or they might be sad or they might be homesick or might be missing each other. I just pray that you put somebody in their path that uh, will be able to lift them up and give them that strength that they need. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, Father, we just ask that you uh, just continue to be with them. And uh, even though they're uh, maybe miles apart, uh, that they are they're strong in each other. Yes, Lord. And we ask all this. In the name of Jesus. God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You'll make your ways back to your seat. We're not done yet. Tommy and uh, Richard. Richard, you have to cue the music. Okay. Uh, Ron, Ron, you and Tommy, if you'll... Prepare the table. Make sure you get the top thing. Uh, got a wonderful song.
that Sandra's going to sing that goes along with communion. Zane, we didn't, I didn't want you to just have the knowledge 